Hey there. I wanted to make a video to show how to make Adobe Illustrator files that have vectors and SVGs go into Blender and really kick some butt. So here's a castle that somebody built. A little castle door is an idea. I built a rectangle, then I built a rounded rectangle like this. And then I pulled on the inner circle to do that. Then I use the selection tool and cut off half of that. Move some of that down, for instance. And then I could close those. And then I use that as a way to find in between the two of these. With the Pathfinder, I looked for a Unity, etc. Show you right there. Break it all up as divide. Then I could just get rid of the parts. And you can do that also here with the new shape builder tool, which is great. So for right now, I'm gonna break that apart. And I'll have something like that. And of course, with that second part, I could just scale that down a little bit like that. And then move that part down. Then that's the castle with the edge. Now the problem is when you bring this stuff into Illustrator, you will notice that the geometry gets very strange. But what's happening is Illustrator sees, if we go here to Outline View, there are, if I select everything, there's just not that many points. So if I showed you here, I could build... This would all create intersections here. There's teeny, tiny, little vertices here. And they all think, well, that's the only place I can go is right there. So they start to do that. And it starts to look really crazy. And then maybe that'll go up there. Forget this. This doesn't exist. Etc. It, it starts to get really bonkers. And it just looks terrible. So if you don't do that, and I close this, and I go back into here, and I open my recent file. Now I can take this, control zero, so that way I can look at this whole thing at once. Now I can save as, and I can call it Illustrator EPS or SVG. So I'll save it as an SVG in here, and it's already there. But, you know, let's, let's see I save that. These aren't that important. The version doesn't matter. SVG, you could do to outline if you really want to, but it wouldn't do much of a difference. Subsetting, forget all that stuff, etc. So let's just do this. See? You don't have to worry about that for right now. So let's, let's just save this. Now, if you go into Blender of any version... And this is version 3.01, I believe. Yeah. So you click on the box, the cube, press delete. Over here, you can use a little arrow and you could open that up for your view and your tools and stuff like that. So let's go to File, Import, SVG. And I'll go into my C drive here, Projects, 3D, Castle Door, and Illustrator File, SVG right there. Now, if I zoom in, it might work. It's a little dark. If you hold the Alt key down and use your middle mouse wheel, right, you can rotate to a certain view. But watch this. Press 7 on the numpad, and it goes to the top view. You'll be told all those in, like, a little breakdown that I'll do later on. I'll link to that. But if you hold Shift and the middle mouse button, look what you can do. And if you click Alt and Left, Middle, see what Middle does? All in the middle, it just centers wherever you want to go. So if I click there, look what I got. Boom. All right. Now, let's go up here to the top right side. Viewport shading. It's nuts. Look at that. It's terrible. So this is an object mode right now. Over here on the right side, you'll see collection, camera, light, castle, door, SVG. There's two curves that came in. And you'll see the actual curve data themselves as well. And then the materials that are on there. And when it's in color, you'll notice that it's gray. So for right now, 
let's just go from object mode into edit mode. Another way to do that is to press the tab key. Notice right there how that changes an object to edit mode. Watch. So now we're in edit mode. And what I want to do is I want to press the letter A, which is select all. So look up here, edit, um, here, select the, the lower menu, select all, A. Everything is selected. Now watch this. If we select everything, and now we go back to object mode, and we say object, convert to mesh. Even though you saw a mesh, now it's actually a mesh. Now let's go back to edit mode and then take a look closer. See what's going on? See those little points? Let's get even closer up here towards the top. Now we can alt middle wheel to do that, to look at a different view or again, to do the top, pull back, that's negative Z or positive Z if you press twice. So let's go in here and use shift and the middle mouse wheel to get a little closer. And alt middle mouse wheel so I know where I want to zoom into. Let's use the highlight tool over here, right? Select box. We're in edit mode. Up here we're in vertex, edge, uh, polygon, Ed, vertex. Let's select those two vertices there. And then we can uh, we can uh, weld them together with the letter M. So we press merge at the center of the two of them. Now it's one. Look over here, same thing. Some weird super tiny vertices together. Press M at center. Now look what you got. Fantastic. But it still looks like a mess. So let's take polygon mode. And if you notice, each one of these polygons, triangles in this case, have a, have a dot. That's how you select polygons in this. It's not the center point of those lines. It happens to be the center point of those polygons. So if I do this, you'll be able to see a little bit more. See that? So let's zoom out and not select one at a time, but just press the letter A. We've selected all of them in that one shape. Now we can press delete. And we only want to delete the faces and keep the edges. Watch again. Only faces. And it should show if we go back to points that the points are still there. And if you notice, there's no edges, nothing, just the polygons are gone. So now what we can do is we can go back there. All right, there. We can also just go to edge mode and get rid of all the edges that are interior. But for right now, let's just get rid of one polygon. Right? Only faces. And now, get rid of all the rest. Only faces. What we should have at the end is the edges. Only edges and faces. Edges and faces. Same thing here. Edges and faces. And here edges and faces. Now what we're left over with, if you look here, if I move this over, is a bunch of vertices. Fantastic. But here's the problem. Click on one of the vertices there. It looks like it's clicking on the edge, but it's actually on the vertex right there. Hold the shift key down and you can select another vertex. But watch this. If you click on a vertex and hold the control key down, you can select all of them in a row. Sometimes it doesn't work, it goes the wrong direction. Like if I click here, and I want to click to here, it's going to go under even though my brain wanted to go over. So you just click on one, two, and it'll follow the path that way once you start to give it a hint. So let's go back, click on one, click on another one with the control key down. And let's look at the bottom of the view here, and we can actually do that here and we can say how many uh, points we have, all this other data. We can do it in preferences as well, too. So we go to Edit, Preferences. And inside of here, we can go to Interface or Viewport, right? So let's go to Interface. 
scroll down and look for status bar. Make sure we see st scene statistics, system memory, etc. And at the bottom, it'll now say, if I close this, we've selected 33 vertices out of 54, including the outside. You know? Okay. So there's 33 vertices in that curve right there. So let's take a close look. What about from here to here? None of them are moving. They're just flat. So let's just highlight only those right there that are flat. And then we can press M and merge those together and look at what we got there. It's fantastic. So that's pretty cool. All right. So now let's build some geometry as an example. We're going to go to edge mode or vertex mode, actually. And we're going to click on the bottom. Hold the shift key down. Now there's nothing here we can use. We should have a division here, but we don't. So what do we do? We want a polygon. I mean, we want a point right there. So watch this. Click on one point. Shift key or control. Second point. Doesn't matter. Now you can right click and subdivide. Look what we have. We have a point. Go up here. Shift key or control. Right click on the line or anywhere. Subdivide. So if we click on here. Control or shift. Let's do shift. All right. Now let's press the letter F for a polygon. Let's do it on the other side. One, two, three, four. Press F. Now, if we go to edge mode, now we're selecting the edge of the polygons, right? If we select the edge, it's and we press F, watch what it does. Fantastic. The problem is, what about all these other points? How many points are there? Let's take a look. Click on here. Now that we've done this, hold down the control key. And it looked at, at the bottom, 28 out of 49. So right now, if I clicked on this vertex and this vertex, the shift, and I right clicked and I subdivided two, how many would I have? One, two, three. What if I did it again? It's already selected. Right click, subdivide again. One, two, three, four, five, etc. Subdivide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's do it one more time for 18. All right, so we have 18 now, all right? And how many did we need? Oh, use the control key. We needed 29. So if we do it again, it'll be 36. That's too many, way too many. But remember, we're going to get rid of some of that anyway. So let's go back to the edge mode. Click on that edge. And press F for a new continuing polygon. See if it works. It does. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's stop there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So now we have seven on each side. And we have this leftover stuff, and there's one in the center there. Let's click on the vertex. There's two polygon spaces. There's three points. And let's just look here. We have one here. Well, technically, yeah, one. And a control key to here. We have 16. One, two, three. 16. To two edges and three vertices. So how do we do that? Let's go in. And again, let's select just those vertices. And then we can press M and merge at the center. Now notice it doesn't disappear, it did before, but it's just kind of buggy. So let's click on here and take a look. We now have, in vertex mode, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And up here, shift, middle mouse wheel, we have two. So let's just highlight these and let's see if we can't just right click and subdivide one two three four one more time 
There's eight now. So let's go to edge and see what happens. Pretty close. We got one left over in the center. So if I would have created one more, there wouldn't have been a problem. So if I go back, right? Let's go back here. Select just that one vertex right there. There's three on each side. Now, can I subdivide that? Nope. But what if I just did this just for now? It's not perfect, but just for now. What if we did that? Let's see what we have here in edge. Watch what happens. Four by four. One, one. There you go. There's many ways to do that and a lot better than what I, I did this time. I did uh, some divisions here and that made that all go this way. So imagine some divisions over here it evens it out a little bit, but it's nice to have this right about here. Same thing in the lower part. So if we go back to object mode, tab, right? Go back here, tab to object mode. Click on this object instead. That's the other curve over here, right? Over here. And we're dealing with that. And we're in object mode. So what if I go into edit mode now? There. So now if I select all of the A key, and I tell that to please go back to object mode after I've selected all of those uh, curves. Object, convert to mesh. Now I go back to edit mode again, which is a little confusing. And you should be able to see in edit mode vertex what's been created. It's really great in the center and it's already done what I wanted to be done in the first place. But if you look up higher, you will notice that all those useless points that we got rid of in the other one, they don't have to exist. That's ridiculous. None of that has to exist. So let's go back and go to Polygon. Let's select this polygon and delete it. Only faces, same thing here. Now I can highlight all of these And then I kept the edges, only faces went away. So here, you get really close with the rest of it. You could probably just get rid of everything. But see how that messes up that edge? It's very strange. All right, so let's just get rid of the edges. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't perfect. Edges only. there. So the rest of it's still there. Now you have to really look close to get this one. Shift middle mouse button. It's just such useless stuff going on there. So you highlight there. Don't touch the very top. Press delete. Faces and edges. Now look what we have if I pull back. Now I've got this polygon. And if you look in vertex mode, look what we have. It's nice and clean. So let's take all of these. I can do it the way I did it up there to show you, but I don't really have to, but I could. So let's just take, let's do this. Let's take all of these and merge them into the center. M at center. See? So all of this got merged to what would be the center. We're lucky. Now we're going to go over here and over here and start to build bridges across. And remember, this is a separate entity than the outer wall itself. So we go back to edge mode, click here, hold the control key down and it goes all the way across, which we don't want down and under. So let's click once shift key, which means the other polygon itself. And then I can right click and I can say subdivide bridge, uh, bevel, bridge edge loops, right? Watch that. Shift key, right click, bridge edge loops. See what's going on there? Now what else can I do here? Can I go back to 
the edge mode and only select this edge and press F. And look at that. And then the last one. Look how much more optimized that is. And again, this should be over a little bit more, a little bit better. I'll redo this video. But there you go. And if we go back to the texture world itself that we have, we should be able to see it in here in a second. There we go. So the base color, we can change that a little bit. We can go back to object mode and go back into color. There you go. See? Now you can see what it's talking about, what we built. It's not gray on gray. Oh, and there's another thing. If you go up here where you see the two circles, show overlays, click on that, turn off the grid. A little more clear to see what's going on. So you can always go back up there and put that back on. So that's about it. You can take this and drag it. You can extrude that stuff now and make your castle whatever you want to make out of it. You know, it's pretty cool. That's it. I got to stop this video.